1979, an American Vela satellite detected signals of a nuclear explosion. And this is where things get interesting, because it did not come from China, the Soviet Union, or the territory of any other nuclear power. The signal originated in the far southern part of the Indian Ocean. If you wanted to find a very remote location, anywhere on the planet, this would be one of the best places to go. And things get even more interesting. The explosion happened during a time of heavy storms, which in theory should have stopped the signal from being detected. So whoever detonated a nuke in the Indian Ocean really wanted to keep it a secret. At first, the American government did not go public with this information, but they did investigate. A number of scientists in secret were called in to give their opinion, and planes were sent to the location to gather samples from the air. A month later, information about the event leaked to the press, so at that moment the government needed to have a clear opinion. Did a nuclear explosion take place? So, they told the public, no, a nuclear explosion did not take place in the Indian Ocean. Most likely, it was a natural phenomenon, or a small meteorite hit the satellite at that moment. But that was not really the end. Did a nuclear explosion really take place? Who did it? And why did the US cover it up? By the end, you'll have the answers. So, let's answer the first question. Did it actually happen? Well, as time passes, more and more evidence tells us that yes, a nuclear explosion did take place. An Australian study found evidence of nuclear fallout. An observatory in Puerto Rico detected signals that would match those of a nuclear explosion. And even the Vela satellite itself, it previously detected over 40 nuclear tests. Every time it was the same signal, and every time it was correct. And other than the scientific evidence, there are even written statements from some very important people, including both KGB and CIA agents. But I'll get back to that a bit later. So right now, four decades later, there is a consensus. A nuclear explosion took place in the southern Indian Ocean near Antarctica. The only problem is, it was detected. So the next question is when things get really interesting. So who did it? Well, we can run down the list of usual suspects. It's not the United States because we know their reaction to this entire thing. Also, we know that it wasn't the Soviet Union because this was quite a weak bomb, even weaker than the one thrown on Hiroshima decades ago. So whoever was testing it out probably wanted to see if they could make a nuclear weapon. What about India? It's called the Indian Ocean, right? Well, they did have the naval capacity to pull it off, but no real reason to. A few years before, they tested their first nuclear weapons in accordance with international law. Okay, what about France? At the beginning, it was a major suspect because the explosion happened relatively close to one of their islands. But if you've seen my video on the real size of countries, you will know that almost anywhere on the planet, there is a French island nearby. And for the same reasons as before, logical thinking tells us that it's also not France. They already had nuclear weapons at that point. The evidence pointed to two countries you would not think of first but both wanted to develop nuclear weapons, South Africa and Israel. But the really interesting thing is that it was not one or the other. Turns out they did it together. Both countries had similar reasons for acquiring nuclear weapons. In the past decades, they fought many wars and they wanted something to guarantee their security or force their neighbors into submission whichever one you choose to believe. I guess, personally, I think both are true. And they had a very good reason for working together. At that moment, South Africa was isolated from the international community because it was, well, an evil racist apartheid state. And for that reason, it was under multiple embargoes. 
which meant that it was very hard for it to acquire weapons, specific technologies and expertise. Israel had access to all of those, but it needed uranium. And guess what South Africa has? Quite a lot of uranium. So they made perfect allies. In secret, they managed to develop nuclear weapons and this was their test. So I guess, congratulations, yes, the bomb worked. Let me read you a quote from a KGB agent that was a commander of a South African naval base. He was caught and arrested and after he served his sentence, he talked about this incident. Although I was not directly involved in planning or carrying out the operation, I learned unofficially that the flash was produced by an Israeli South African test, codenamed Operation Phoenix. The explosion was clean and was not supposed to be detected, but they were not as smart as they thought, and the weather changed, so the Americans were able to pick it up. Okay, you might not trust a spy, but how about a quote from Jimmy Carter, the American president at the time? This is taken from his diary that was published only relatively recently. We have a growing belief among our scientists that the Israelis did indeed conduct a nuclear test explosion in the ocean near the southern end of South Africa. Now remember, at the time, Jimmy Carter told the public that this was not a nuclear test. But all politicians lie, it's part of their job. I don't want to be too hard on Jimmy Carter from my limited knowledge He's one of the nicer US presidents. So yeah, in the following decades, not only is there pretty much an agreement that a nuclear explosion took place, but also there is a consensus among experts that it was done by South Africa and Israel together. So why did the US cover it up? Well, the obvious reason is that Israel is a very close ally. And the United States also wanted to be on very good terms with South Africa as a way of countering Soviet influence. There is another more cynical reason. Just six months before, the American president helped negotiate peace between Egypt and Israel. And that was probably his largest foreign policy success. And his re-election was coming up. So he probably really wanted to be seen as the president that is bringing peace to the Middle East. <laughs> but you know what's not very good for peace in the Middle East? Israel developing nuclear weapons. If this information was made public, best case scenario would have been increased tensions in the region and worst case scenario, war. Of course, today everyone knows Israel has nuclear weapons, which only puts pressure on other countries like Iran to develop their own nuclear arsenal, which puts the region in a state of cold war. But that's a topic for another video if someone is interested. Thanks for watching. I do my very best with these videos, but keep in mind that I could be wrong about certain things, so it's always good to do your own research. And if, after admitting that, you still want to support a small channel, feel free to subscribe and press this button. That way you will be able to see my videos in the future. I would really appreciate it. Also, YouTube thinks you might like one of these two videos. I have no idea if YouTube is right, but there's only one way to find out. And most importantly, I hope you have an amazing day.